So a major strip property is finally allowed to open to 100% capacity, which is confusing to me, so we'll talk about the confusion. And a property has been sold off the strip, and the company that sold it took a massive hit on the property. We'll talk about the property that was sold. You know the names of all these properties, trust me. One of them you keep asking me about, and I had nothing until we went public with this news, and now it's all over the news, and we're going to analyze all of that. How's it going, guys? My name is Steven, and I am not leaving Las Vegas. I'm a Vegas blogger. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for the future notice notifications if you want to do that. We cover current news. We do analysis of that news. We also do live streams on the channel, short films on the city, tips on vacationing and moving here. We cover everything Vegas and I do videos pretty much every single day on the channel, be it a live stream or a video update like this. If you guys want to support us further, do me a favor. If you're living in America, living in America, you got to wear a face mask if you go into big stores, even if there's no mask mandate. So if you got to wear a mask, we're the only two that you'll ever need. Vegas face mask.com no s at the end my wife makes these by hand uh, they go around the back of your head not your ears and they ship out anywhere in america with free shipping two for 25 dollars we have like 60 different designs on the site it's vegasfacemask.com shipping to eu the european union or uk is about 20 bucks sorry i can't get around that and also canadian shipping is available for 15 dollars we ship anywhere in the world just reach out to us go to vegasfacemask.com no s at the end or facebook.com forward slash vegasfacemask and drop us a line we also have patreon and channel memberships you guys go to early access to stuff get your name in the credits i'll change the credits later on this weekend for the new people the people that have come and gone out of that system and now we get to the actual news all right so we have a property that is open to 100 percent capacity and when i say i'm confused it's because i don't understand how we are at 80 percent capacity according to southern nevada when right now if you come to the casinos are 80 percent capacity but the wind and the encore have been given the green light to go to 100 percent capacity and it doesn't really explain in any of the articles that i read on this when it was a news item today but it just says that they got there by the win having 88 percent of their employees now vaccinated great that's cool how did they get there we did a video a few weeks about that they told their employees that they could either get a vaccine or they could get a pcr test at their expense every single week before they go to work it's funny how people are motivated isn't it you put the carrot and the stick in front of them and then they take the stick and they don't want to get beaten by the stick so they decide to get the vaccine but that was good enough for the nevada gaming commission the Nevada Gaming Commission said, thanks for being so compliant. Your reward now, your carrot, if you will, is to open to 100% capacity. But again, usually there's a hierarchy with these kinds of things, right? I mean, you have federal law, then you have state law, then you have local laws. I'm wondering where the hierarchy is here. We are very focused on business, but if the Nevada Gaming Commission can supplant what the county said, which was 80% for everybody, then I guess that means that we are a little more focused on business than I thought, which is actually a positive thing in my mind because we all know what supports southern nevada it's casinos it's gaming it's travel and tourism so when an encore are 100 percent good for you looks like you made it we'll give them a round of applause that might be something you consider if you want to make sure that everywhere you go that you're staying that people are vaccinated and there's a mitigated risk of you getting sick but the big other news today obviously is the san manuel tribe purchasing the palms resort the Palms Resort, man, that property I have so mem many memories with. The wife and I used to see movies at the Palms. We used to go over and cash paychecks when I worked in marketing and timeshare on the Strip back in the day. I have a lot of memories of the place. And it's a really interesting property. If you're not familiar with the Palms, it's located just off of the Strip. You go on to Flamingo Road and Las Vegas Boulevard on the side of the street where the um, Caesars Palace and Bellagio are. Then you walk or you drive a little bit west. You go past the Rio first and there it is, the palms so brief history on the palms so we can know what they're buying into and by the way imagine if you bought a house for nine hundred and thirty to nine hundred and thirty thousand dollars and then just a few years later you sold it for six hundred and twenty thousand dollars you wouldn't be too happy with the loss that you took but we're going to get back to those numbers in a minute so we're opened in 2001 as the maloof brothers decide to expand their horizons and come out to the strip or as close to it as they could uh, they were the filming location for a couple of different massive projects like the real world back in 2002 there was a tattoo parlor that had a reality show based on it and uh, it had a second tower that opened up in 2005 but since the maloof brothers were very well connected being nba team owners they were able to get big athletes to show up like dennis rodman and other different basketball players and before you knew it the palms was the hot spot to go in las vegas some people were paying ten thousand dollars a night to stay in the suites and some of the suites were over the top 
Think of a suite with an entire basketball court inside or suites with 10 foot long beds because basketball players are very tall people and you have to be able to sleep, don't you? And so guests would pay a huge amount to stay there. But unfortunately, as time went on and as we went through the housing crisis, uh, it got a little bit tighter for them. They started missing loan payments back in 2010. And after that happened, they went into a deal with creditors selling 98% of the entire operation to two people, two parties, one being TPG and the other being something called Leonard Green and Partners, leaving the Maloof brothers with 2% of the entire operation. Flash forward a few years and Station Casinos purchased the entire property and operation in May of 2016 for $312 million, then did a $620 million renovation. Remember when I said, imagine you had a house that was worth $930,000? Well, they now had $932 million into the project. Then COVID, of course, hit, but a few things happened that were unfortunate for Station. Station Casinos owns the Red Rock Station, or Red Rock Resorts, as Red, we, as it's known. They also own a couple of other properties that are locals' casinos around town, so they were excited to get near the Strip and buy the property. But they opened up something called Chaos Nightclub, and Chaos Nightclub was utter chaos for them. They courted big celebrities to do their big, huge parties off the Strip, and they thought they would be just fine. The Ghost Bar at the Palms was a popular destination for years, as was the Rio right across the street. Unfortunately, in this case, Chaos did not thrive. And Chaos closed seven months after it opened after stations saw a $52 million loss from the previous year. So in uh, so after $932 million were put into it, seven months after opening, Chaos actually closed. And then the pandemic hit and the rest is history. The Palms has remained closed to this date until it was sold for $650 million. So they posted up a huge loss on this, $932 million in, $650 million sold. So sold to the San Manuel tribe, the San Manuel tribe of Mission Indians, of San Manuel Band of Mission Indians, to get it correct, they purchased the property. It's the second tribe right now to enter into the Las Vegas market in the last year, with, of course, the Mohican Sun out of Connecticut, I believe it is, operating the Virgin Hotel's casino floor. And the tribe sponsors and has many, many routes to the city. So I actually kind of like this purchase. And whether or not they were doing this for politicking to get into the market, whether or not they really are um, genuine when they say that they have so many connections to Las Vegas because they are so close, um, it could be either one. But they have put a lot of money into supporting the Vegas Golden Knights through sponsorships, uh, Allegiant Stadium, and the Raiders as well. They paid $9 million to the UNLV Hospitality School. That's the largest out-of-state donation made to a university, I believe, in the entire country. I I'm pretty sure. Uh, the tribe also paid over $250,000 to local charities in town. Uh, public Education, the Mayor's Fund for Las Vegas Life, that funds various uh, charities that the city council then doles out. They also give to Catholic Charities of Southern Nevada, make a wish foundation and several more and they actually operate one of the most successful casinos in all of southern california that casino is only 70 miles outside of Los Angeles, so it's close to Vegas. It's not anywhere near the scope of what you see here. I believe their hotel has just under 500 rooms. They have about 4,900 employees, you know, a couple thousand slot machines and a couple hundred table games out there. So that's a big deal, though, for the city. It's nice to see one of these properties be purchased and not have it be what's called a real estate investment trust. And that's where you would have somebody purchase one of, say, Caesars properties, and then they would go ahead and just let Caesars stay on the land stay on the property, operate the property, and then own it and be a landlord. This is where they can actually take the property, do what they want with it, clean staff if they wanted to, clean house if they wanted to, bring people in from California, do whatever they were going to do. Now, as for the people working at the Palms, I haven't had anybody reach out to me and I don't know anything about that. Maybe they're all being offered their jobs back and they're just going to transfer whoever signs their paycheck. That would be a good thing, especially if you worked there in the past. Um, the Palms is a big property. It's an important property as well. I mean, the Rio is opening up, uh, is open up. We have uh, the Star Trek convention happening this, I believe, August 11th to 15th this year. So maybe it'll be open by then, the Palms, that is. I don't know when the Palms is going to open. There's nothing in any of the news reports about when it's going to open. But as soon as we know here on the channel, we will tell you when that's going to happen because a lot of you guys love your Palms. Get your Palms on when you come into town. The Palms has several high-end restaurants and several reasons for you to go to it. If anything, it's a nice reprieve to be off the Strip and it's close enough that you could always get to the Strip. Even if you wanted to walk it, it's definitely possible. I've done it before, although in the heat, it might be a pain in the butt. But what do you think about the Palms being sold? It's a nice thing to see it being sold to a new ownership group 
that can have some plans for the property. And hopefully they are looking to just run it and give an excellent service level to everybody because you don't become one of the most successful casino operators in Southern Nevada or Southern California, that is, if you don't have a quality of service that's unparalleled. So let's hope they transfer that over here. So positive news all around. The Palms is taking one more step in getting opened and reopening with new ownership. The one in the Encore are 100% capacity, although I'm still a little confused as to how that works. But you tell me what you think about this video in the comments below. And that's my video today and I'm sticking to it. My name is, once again is Steven and I am not leaving Las Vegas. I'm a Vegas blogger. If you guys want to support the channel, consider the options in the first pinned comment of this video. And if you guys want to show support, you can always find a way to do it there. Uh, also visit VegasFaceMask.com. No S at the end. I was wearing it around my neck the whole time. You didn't even see it. This is called Blue Mosaic. Made by my wife. Shipped out to you. That's my video today. And that's the time of the video where we have to say 3, 2, 1, click. Are you all ready for this? We say 3, 2, 1, and click.